In this sixth video in the Making of the Bullet Catcher's Handbook series, we're going to be taking stock. That means there's no design work going to be taking place here. But this is a vital moment. Now, clearly, if this was a, a real publishing company, we would have all these systems and our suppliers and everything worked out largely in advance, and we wouldn't be having to faff around in this way going backwards and forwards. But this is a kind of one-off deal, so I, I don't have it all sorted out. And so I do have to go through a slightly inefficient process. So you'll see that uh, what we've done, we've gone through a process of, um, so far, producing concept designs effectively for things like the, the cover. I'll just show you that now a little, little bit. Um, for the cover, for example and for um, the internal layout of the pages. We've got concepts for those and we know kind of what we're doing and we can have a certain amount of trust that um, we're going to be able to produce the thing that we want. So from this launch pad I now need to look to the very end of the process and to the printing companies who might be helping us with the final stage, the actual production of the book. So um, if I was you know, in the market for 10,000 copies, what I would probably do is just draw up a list of my requirements and email that to various companies and they could bid for the project if they wished. But I'm not. Realistically, we're looking at a print run of 100 copies or 200 copies in the first instance, and then I can always reprint later on, and that's the way this is going to work, because I, I don't know how many of these I can shift, I don't know how many people are going to be interested, so I kind of just kind of try, put a, a toe in the water, print, uh, print 100, print 200, see how many people want them, and, and take it from there. So. With this situation, I'm going to be relying on specialist printers who do short run print runs. And from experience, I know that they tend to have a whole range of, uh, you, you know, limitations, things that they can and cannot do. And they're going to be pretty, pretty well defined in order to make that business model work. It's perfectly reasonable from their, from their point of view. So what I need to do is make a shopping list of what I want and then go and compare that to what's on offer. So what do I want? Uh, in an ideal world, well, I want, I'm planning it on an A6 format, that very small uh, little format. And um, now I don't actually mind if it's a slightly different format, but that's what I've laid out so far. And I certainly want something that's going to have that small uh, compact feeling to make it feel like a special little object. Crucially, I want it to be a hardback. Now, I, that really is a, a red line issue for me. I think for this thing, it needs to be, at least in the first instance, um, a, a little specialist item of quality, something that people who are really invested in, in the, the, the world that I've created with these novels, uh, that they may wish to own as, as a little beautiful thing that they can treasure. I'm thinking of having the book produced with a plain cloth cover so something something like a traditional book like this and uh, but then I would like to have a dust jacket over the top and the dust jacket would have a printed design on it and that would be the design that I've been working up now optionally if that is all available then I might look at ways of having a uh, some kind of simple um, design perhaps in foil on the internal cover on the uh, uh, within the dust jacket but that's something it's not a deal breaker it would just be a nice little additional thing I, it's just something vaguely in the back of my mind if it's available I'll find out how much it costs now I could print all the internal pages as black ink on white paper but I would really like, as you've seen in the earlier design uh, of the internal layout, I'd really like to have the option of having some words or letters in red and some in black. So my preferred option here is two-colour printing. And uh, I know that some printers offer this, 
but typically what's offered is either black and white or full color. So full color is the third option there. But I'd want to make sure that if it was full color, it still felt like a traditional two color print press printing of black and red. And um, if, if the full color pushed it away from that feeling, then I would not be able to do it. So that's something I would probably need to ask for samples to be sent um, to make sure that the, uh, the kind of qualities of materials I'm looking for are, are what I need. So that's the basic, um, the basic plan. Um, the next things are kind of niceties, additional niceties. Maybe if they were on offer, we would cost them out and see how much it would be to have them. But it's not a deal breaker. And the first of those is a ribbon, to have a little ribbon that keeps your place in the book, sewn into the spine, and it just lies, lies between the pages uh, wherever you've got to. Some printers offer this as an option. It kind of gives the whole thing a, a nice feel. I like the like the sense of it, it feels traditional, it feels old, feels special, but I want to cost it out, see how much that would actually be. Another thing that I might want is to have the first page inside the cover and the last page inside the back cover a, a different colour paper, a different, perhaps a slightly different weight of paper. And again, this is something you often see in um, more expensive hardback books. I'd like to have a look at that and consider the cost implications if it were available because again it might add a kind of layer of quality to the whole thing. So there we go those are uh, those are my that's my wish list if you like my requirements and going down to wishes. So I think I'm unlikely to get a printer that's going to offer all of those for a short print run. So what I need to do now is research uh, printers online, perhaps produce a spreadsheet which lays out all the different things they offer and figure out which one or ones are coming closest to my requirements. And indeed, if I can find one that uh, passes all the red line issues that I have, all the absolute requirements, which I think I will. And um, and per perhaps look for samples from these companies just to see the actual materials themselves. And uh, then I need to choose one of these printing companies and kind of fix on that and find out in detail what their requirements are in terms of format, in terms of the different files I will have to produce. Um, we'll go into some of those technicalities probably in later videos. And then I need to go back to my internal page layout, which you will have seen on the in the first uh, two or three uh, videos in this series. And I'm going to need to make any modifications that are required. I've set it up for A6. Am I going to be able to do it in A6? Will I need to, to change that? And uh, similarly, I need to go back to the cover design. And now thinking about that dust jacket design, um, you know exactly how do I need to lay it out what are the dimensions what is the thickness of the spine for example I'm going to need to know the number of pages to work that out and so on so we, we're going to be homing in on the very precise end product those are my stages that's what lies ahead and uh, this is a taking stock moment and so I think the next video has got to be about the specifics of the different printing companies um, and uh, once I've done the research I'm, I'll get back to you.